All right. <clears throat> Sean, you're here? Yes, I'm here. All right. Well, welcome everybody. This is our first Valence Developer Diaries. Um, thought it was a good time to start it since lots of people are at home with the stay at home. And uh, we thought our first session would be going over uh, the current app usage in Valence and then recreating that and hopefully recreating it in a better way using uh, Nitro App Builder. Um, these sessions might be just weekly. They're gonna be uh, informal. Um, we're hoping that if people start joining and watching um, in the chat, because we have everybody muted, feel free to ask questions and we could either take them as we're going. Um, if they're topics, we could always take those topics and talk about that in the next session. I think we're gonna try to shoot for every Friday um, and we will, it'll always be Sean and I, and then sometimes we might have special guests. So, um, with that said, Sean, do you uh, have anything to say in the beginning or are we good to go? Yeah, maybe, um, I think we chose to, to, to recreate the app usage app just, you know, one, because we're not crazy about the state of it right now. And, you know, with all the uh, enhancements that have taken place within App Builder, we know it's something that we can uh, do now and, and, and make better than, than the current version. Um, so I don't know, maybe we start and just look at the current version and then we'll just show mock, show mock-ups of what, we, what we're going to change it to. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Um, also, one point is that these will are being recorded and then we will then upload them to our YouTube channel at CNX Corp. So if people want to reference it later. They will be there. Um, okay, all right. With that said, let's log in. And let's launch the first app usage, the initial one that we currently have in the portal today. Not a lot of data in it. <laughs> no, not a lot at all. We're on our test instance, so we really don't have much. But really, all you can really do here is, uh, you know, you could change the filters on the left. You know, it's, it's pretty limited because you can only see the top 15 apps. And then if you click on one of those, um, you just get some, some detail. So great. we want to uh, enhance this a bit to, you know, give a bit more information. So it would okay. take a look at the mock-ups. Yeah, let me, uh, I'm going to make you allow you to share your screen okay hey guys is there a uh, another way to get that zoom file because it says it can't be downloaded the oh for the zoom itself yeah I'm, I'm, I'm guessing my corporate laptop won't let me do it so i'm just wondering if there's an alternate way i can i dialed in but i was gonna want to see it but you know <laughs> oh yeah uh, yeah i don't i don't know i uh, yeah if you're fire a web version or anything like that no it definitely I'm on the open internet it's it's my laptop that's causing the problem i guess i've yeah. never used zoom so that's one of the okay problems. yeah usually it's just it's just automatically will download and install on your on your local device um all right i mean I'll we will I'll yeah We'll re-record, we'll have this recorded, so we'll, we'll be uploading it. Um, so you'll be able to reference the, the video, because yeah, just uh, just hearing audio is probably not gonna be that useful. Um, but I, yeah. maybe if you wanna like hit us up afterwards, support at cnxcorp.com, we could try to see if there's something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna forward it to my personal Mac and see if I can use it on there, so. Okay. I just thought I'd ask. All right, okay. thanks. Sean, can you share or do I need to? Uh, you need to stop your sharing. Okay. All right, can you share now? Perfect. Okay. All right, so these are just some really simple mock-ups of what, what we want to uh, accomplish here. So we're going to create a form on the left-hand side that will allow you to filter uh, the results on the right. 
We'll have a grid here that shows the app and the total usage, then a couple charts, um, the top active apps and the top active users. Um, if the user clicks on any of, any of the grid rows or the chart elements, we'll take them into a detail screen, which will, we'll have a pivot grid here to allow them to you know, really uh, summarize the data. And then the right hand side will be a list just showing all of the details that comprise of this pivot grid. So I think without further ado, we can just start creating it. Yep. I'm, I'm going to make you back to or stop sharing my screen here. Okay. So back to you. And then we're just like we said in the email that was sent out that we're going to keep these to an hour. So if we don't finish completely the app, then we'll just continue on in the next session. Okay, let's start this up. So first thing we'll need is some data for that initial list, right? I'm gonna start there. So we're kind of assuming too that everybody's somewhat familiar with App Builder, like we're not uh, really explaining everything we're doing here. Um, so, you know. Right. And if people, if there's wants that they just wanna true tutorial of just app builder itself we would do that i think this session we're just assuming that you kind of have some knowledge of what it is we're just going to create a new data source um, for our first widget which will just be a grid list of data which will be the app usage um, and we've cheated a little bit and just prior to this created the sql statement so we don't have to walk through that and waste anybody's time so i'm going to paste that in <clears throat> okay, so we have our records, looks fine. And I'm just going to call it app list. So we always try and get in the habit of, of adding tags to anything we create because I don't know if, if some of you guys know if you have a lot of, uh, you use App Builder a lot, you'll know that this list can get really large really quickly so we really make use of the tags to filter things down okay so let's create our first widget which will be a grid off that and <clears throat> i think we we're going to want i don't know we want everything i would think so yeah uh well maybe we'll t i think we take one of those maybe we take one of those uh columns and we'll combine multiple fields like we get so on the database we get the icon and we get the style the style is actually the color so maybe here we show how we can um, you know put icons within okay. your grid cells all right so app the usage and then i did cheat a little bit I want to have name actually. Yeah. And we're going to do a little bit of formatting here, like Sean was saying. We already did this, so we don't have to waste anybody's time. Let's see what we're getting right now. Okay. Oh, oh, you put the, I did the, wrong one. the wrong column. Right. There we okay. Go. So here, let me just go over this a bit. We have the app record. So that's, this is the valence app record. So we're getting the current icon, the style, and then we're just marking it up. So then we see it. It's, it's similar to the exact same thing that you see on like the launch pad when you're launching the app. So each app has a unique icon and color class. So we wanted that to look the same way in our grid. Really the point to take from this is any HTML markup is valid within those custom formatting. So, you know, you, you can do anything that's within the possibility of HTML. Right. Um, I don't think we want to do any, anything in that aspect. I would say we want to probably 
change this to be I don't know, 60 fixed width yeah usage okay and maybe just a search on this or something yeah i think just yeah i agree search we'll do contains make it easier for them to find it um paging I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking we just change it to 500 mm -hmm. i think that should be that should be it right good start okay List. All right, I think we just, let's create the app. You mind just and get that widget in there and then we'll just start building on it? Yeah, anytime we're, we're, we're doing development, typically we, we really do things like we would never do a lot of coding before running something, just as with App Builder too. Um, you know, we typically create a widget, incorporate it in the app, Run the app, go back, create another widget. We kind of do it in stages typically. Okay, we only have one widget out here, so that makes it easy. And we'll call it app usage. Hey, do you know, do we have a literal for that? Oh, we should, um, I would think. So a lot of people probably don't know, but if, if you can, you can prompt in here for literals, I don't know if we have a literal for it, but these are, these are literals. So that way, if the user happens to log in a different language, um, it would use that language as literal. And you can create your own custom literals for yourself too. You can go through that in another session. Um, all we did was to prompt in any text areas, even like grid columns, if you want to use literals, you just do it at four. We have it. Nice. Okay. All right. Let's just yeah. get this thing created and saved and we'll just start. Um, we don't want to do that though. We need to do that in the app record for literals. And we'll let it be for both desktop and monitor and perfect. Okay. Let's make sure we get this. And here we go. Not much to it, but it's a start. All right, so I think back, according to those wireframes, we had on yeah, the right hand it? side, we have two, two column charts. Okay. And I think we could probably create one of those charts, the top app, active apps, right off up. of it. It was a column, right? We were yeah, it was a column chart. And I think we were you know, just limiting the results to the top, let's say, five applications. And then we want the app name. Okay, perfect. I don't think we want any filters or anything else on this, right? I wouldn't no. think so. I think typically, typically too, we might, when we see it in the app, we might end up putting a little padding within this just because the, uh, you, you could see the, the uh, I forgot what it's called, but basically the, the chart elements really ride up high to the top. Oh, you mean the, the you putting padding on the actual widget itself? In, internal padding, yeah. Mm. And I guess, I don't know why, maybe that's something we consider to probably just default a value in some yeah. future. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, we just got a question from someone that's asking if there are controls for the scale of the chart. The scale. The scale. Um, yeah, I think, I think maybe he's talking about minimum maximum value. Like if you go, I, I, yeah, we do have minimum maximum. So if you change that to like one in 10. And two. 
So that would definitely change it. I think that's what he means. Um, oh, if that's not the answer that you're looking for, if you want to just update the chat. All right, he said we're good. <laughs> okay, cool, awesome. Um, all right, so then I'm gonna leave it at that. Save it. And then we had, we wanna do another one, which would be, what was it, active top. users? Yeah, the top active users. Okay, and that one we need to have a new data source for. We're just gonna stick with the SQL data source. And I have a bit of SQL already prepared for this. Okay. Uh, same column again, right? And then I think we had a column in here for the value field and then the login ID because we want it by user. Perfect. And maybe a limit as well. Yeah. I mean, I know we don't need it now, but. And then we'll add some of that padding. Okay. All right, now we can fill out that right side of the main screen. All right, so let's go back in the app and add it. So this might be something that not everyone has seen before, but in, in this case, we want we wanted those two charts, top and bottom. So we're gonna we're gonna introduce a utility widget first, which is a vertical layout. It's basic, basically just a container where you can stack items top to bottom. that up and let's just get these widgets in here and did part uh, of the wireframes is apps first then users yeah i think so okay and then users all right so we always anytime we're adding in new um, widgets, we're always sure to make sure that the padding is uniform among all widgets. So in our case, it looks like we want 16 pixels of padding uh, throughout. So oftentimes, you know, if you have two widgets side by side, you're going to have 32 pixels. So you'll need to either knock one of those down to zero or split the difference and do eight and eight. Right. Okay. Did we want to put, I'm just, a title on these? Yeah, we can go I back really, to that. Uh, we probably should. Okay. Um, I, I don't think we're, I think that's good for right now just to incorporate these two because then we need to work on probably drilling in to see the. We just fixed the padding on that bottom chart too. Oh, that's right. Where is it? And then a left zero. Yeah, why did that? Okay. All right. All right, let's add uh, top uh, active apps or 
what did you, what do we want to just top active yeah. apps? Yeah, I doubt we have a literal for that. I know. And then the other one would top active users. Sure. All right, <clears throat> now should we probably look at uh, detail of some form or what let's, was that? Let's run the app and see what it looks like now. All right. I'm just gonna reload the frame and let, instead of closing it and restarting, it's the same, th same thing. Okay. All right. All right. So now maybe we incorporate that um, we had a we had a form on the left hand side to filter these results. Right. Okay. So then that. Oh yeah, that's an interesting one because we yeah. don't have data for that. So yeah, this is this is a this is kind of a unique situation in that we we want a form, um, but what we don't we don't really we don't have so all widgets are based off of a data source, and in this case we don't really have a a file that has from date to date and user ID. That's essentially what we want to filter by. Um, so you can see what Johnny's doing here. He's just uh, creating a temp table. Yep. Based off sys dummy. So really we, if you remember, <clears throat> we wanted a form that had two dates so we could do a from and to date and then also a user ID. And we know our user ID is, is uh, numeric. So this is a way so we don't have to create a table on, on in DB2. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know what to call it. Maybe like app filter or app usage filter. Sure. So now we just create a form off of that data source. Mm. So our form, we're going to include all fields and we're going to make every field in here editable. And we're going to create that user ID. We want that. We don't want the user to have to type in a user ID. So we're going to transform that to a drop down. And I don't know if we have uh, a data source to accommodate that yet. So we might have to come back and do it. Okay. So field groups. So we want our from and to to live next Absolutely. to each other. So we could create a field group. And that's just a way to group fields together. From date and to date. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, anything? Uh, I don't know if we really need a title on this, I don't think so. We might want to say too on data, we probably don't want to automatically load the data on this. Good point. Because this is really just for input. Yeah, you never want to load it. There we go. So typically we'll see we'll see a lot of you a lot of customers um, in order to do their filtering. Sean? We're going to create one form to filter down all widgets. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I just got. Okay, you cut out for me. I think my internet had a. Oh, okay. Or something. It was just me, though, because I got. Zoom told me I had an unstable connection, so. Okay. All right. So now we're going to put that form inside this application.
Yeah, mate. I'm happy. Yeah. Oh yeah, things got really slow. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. We kind of figured there might be technical difficulties the first time doing this. Yeah, I'm restarting my VPN real quick. Come on. Okay. All right. All right. I was going to add widget. And you probably don't remember, but the wireframes, we had this one all the way on the far left. And and we actually um, butt the left-hand side all the way to the end. So we're just going to remove all margin everywhere yep. on this one. And maybe we put this to a fixed yeah. width, too. Yeah, I think so. Um, anything to 30? Uh, a little more 60 that's just a 300 looks good yep all right okay so maybe we just save see what it renders like make sure we're happy with it Sweet. All right. So the next thing, maybe we want to create a data source where we can have a combo box of users. And, you know, we're just going to go after our VV users file. That's the database of users within Valence and just get all the, uh, get the user ID and the user name. We'll output the user name. And then when they click the user name, we'll use the user ID as the filter. All right, so what file are we going to go after? Uh, so I think just select star from VV users. And, you know, we use this a lot because I don't know the field names. And then on the right-hand side, it'll show us, and we can just kind of select the ones that we want. I just want user ID and uh, VV login ID, I think. So we want login ID and... Maybe we uh, order it by login ID. All right. Looks okay. good. Oh, and, and just so you know, you see that login ID is showing up on the right-hand side as uh, just a set of numbers. That's because that's, that's a graphic field. But the UI knows how to take that graphic field because you can see on the left hand side that it knows how to take those numbers and uh, convert it to something we can read. A good point. So now that we have a data source of users, we can go back into that form and we can hook that user field into a combo box. And that's what the transform is for. So transform to a drop down. We could search our data sources in here. And then it's going to ask us, second step is, what field do you want to display to the user? Well, we don't want to show them the ID. They know them by the login, by the name. So we're going to display the, the login ID. And then the value field is the user. what we want to, yeah, that's what we want to filter by. And we want this clearable. Oh, yeah, good point. Okay. Sweet. So now, now maybe, now maybe we go into the app and actually wire up that filtering. Behaviors it is. So according to our, our wireframes, uh -huh. on our on our app usage filter form, we have a search button. Okay, so we're gonna add a button. And I'm crawling. And we set it as a primary button. And what that does is one, it, it kind of, it changes the color of the button to, to make it stand out. 
And secondly, if you're within a form field and you press enter, because you have this marked as a primary button, it will perform the click of the primary button if you press enter within a field. So we're gonna be filtering three widgets here. I'm gonna start with the first one. And user ID to user ID. And then also, I want to have the from date and to date also if they chose that. So which one would that be? Usage date. I'm trying to remember what that would be. You know what, I think this this might be a uh, this might be a good a good point to introduce app variables into the application. Right, but I also think is this when we want to do a custom filter? Oh, uh, is that from Tate? So what if what if we do what if we do um. When they click, when they click on a uh, on on the search, maybe at that point we store off everything that they've clicked into app into app variables. Then we can use those app var variables to do our filters. All right. Well, we'll and then and we'll explain why why we're going that route as 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 we go through it a bit more. So why don't we first create a couple app very or few app variables. We'll create a from date, a to date, and a user ID. To do that, we need oh. to turn oh, it yeah. on. So, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. so as you can see, we're not completely scripted here. Um, so there's a new concept in, in uh, App Builder called app variables. Um, if you have uh, like one of the latest 5.2 plus, but it's a hidden feature now because it's 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 beta right now. Um, so we're going to enable the beta features flag uh, in order to see that. And Johnny, it looks like you went oh, to the wrong group right now in order to yeah maybe just log in as QSEC offer for now. Right. So as Johnny's doing that, um, app variables allow you to set a value to, to an app, to you know, any, it's like a global application variable that you can reference throughout behaviors or you can reference in your RPG programs. It'll probably make more sense as we see it here. Okay, so he just enabled it, so now, Next time we go into App Builder, we should see a new option in there. I'm just gonna log back in this major then. All right, we do okay. it. We got it. So there are the app variables. So by default, we have a few app variables that are defined for you already. So uh, we won't get into that now, but we're gonna, we're gonna, let's create our own app variables. So one we'll call from date. Right. Yep. And then we'll create another one called to date. And then we'll create another one called user ID. Okay. So now back to behaviors, we're going to create that search button against the form and all sorts of things are going to happen when they click this search button. Let's First thing is we're, we're going to set our app variables. So we're just storing off some values. So basically we want to, we want from date. So if he clicks inside from date, he's got this little search here. It shows us the available fields that he can select to, to map that value 
to the app variable. user ID. Okay, so so first we're doing that. Okay, so our, we also want to, now we want to filter our our three widgets out there. We'll start with the grid. And notice now, um, so the first thing we want to do is, where's our user ID in here? It is right here. Okay, we want to map that to the app variable. We might as well just map it to the app variable of user ID. Okay, and then the next one, it's the from date or to date, but we want to do that with a greater than or equal. Uh, okay. Because that would be the... Uh, okay, so you just, you want to do, you, you want to do a... Um, you're right, you do want to do a custom filter here probably. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so so here's our problem. Yeah, we definitely. <laughs> Everyone, so, so our database, we have a timestamp. We don't have just a date field. And basically in this case, we, we, we really want to do like a unique filter here. So if, if, we, if we get rid of what we typed in, yeah, we get rid of that mapping. Notice there's an enter custom filter. Um, if we click the help for that custom filter, whoa, that doesn't look right, but anyhow, <laughs> we're seeing the help. Um, we can't, we, I don't think we're going to have time to explain everything in here. Uh, maybe we, we could probably do a session alone just on that. Um, but I think we have a, a pre-canned uh, custom filter that we want to perform here. From day to date. Okay, well, right away, I'm going to say that I need my that would be uh, from date. So, so right. notice this, this, yeah, this custom filter. Actually, you could probably use get app var. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because we, we, we set those. So notice the, the this custom filter provides you three functions um, in order to work with your data. Get from, get to, and get at var. I want that too. Which is what, which one is that? The TST timestamp. TST timestamp. We're going to be building this additional SQL, right? Right. Yeah, really all we're doing here behind the scenes is creating a, a portion of a where statement to run. Filter equals blank for right now. And then if user ID and filter is equal to user ID, plus what building this statement equal sign plus. I want to get my next two, right, for the user ID. Yeah. Next would be the, I need to deal with the from and to date. So if it's populated, because we're only, we're only building this with a custom filter because we want to say if it, if they've chosen to populate that, we want, we want to apply it. Right, and the whole reason we're having to go through this complexity is because our the database we're dealing with has a timestamp field. It doesn't have a date field. Right. 
you know, I, we probably could have made this easier and just changed our data source to say, all right, let's just uh, create a date field that gets sent back. But figured it'd be good to just have uh, a more uh, complicated thing in here, just, uh, just so you know it's available. <laughs> And yes, uh, someone just asked something, is, is the custom filter JavaScript? Yes, uh, right now we're in, we're in JavaScript. So anything that's valid in JavaScript is valid here. And then now we're convert, I need to convert it as a date. So all Johnny's doing here is just building up that string filter and ultimately he's going to return that string. So when the data source gets filtered, it's going to pass this string down to the back end and the back end is going to run the data source and it's going to apply this string as an, a, another where condition to filter down the results. Uh, greater than or equal to, and then I'm going to add my SQ plus the phone date. SQ stands for single quote, by the way. Which we define right here. Yeah. It's easier to define it, otherwise it just starts looking really ugly. Timestamp. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think so. <laughs> it looks like, let's try it. Let's let's change it. To make the less than equal to rather than greater than equal to. Uh, that is a good point. Thank you. We just wanted to see if anyone was paying attention. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> uh, SQ, SQ, I've got my matching SQs. I think that's, that's it. Well, let, let, let's try it. Let's just try it. Okay, so that's the first one. So maybe rather than go through each yeah. one, let's just, let's just make sure it works. Because we're basically, we're just going to copy and paste that filter again for the other filters as well. So once we know this one's working. So we don't have a lot of data to deal with here. Um, it might be hard. Maybe just put it to, to uh, let me do uh, Q set because there was, I thought I saw a list Q sec somewhere here. So that should do. Okay. Nice. nice. Okay. okay, cool. Perfect. Uh, date wise. I don't, I think we're, this is a new instance, unfortunately. And I bet all the, you might, you might see a, something from yesterday. We just created this instance last night. Let's just see if you limit it. Yeah, okay. All right, let me just change it then to today. Perfect. Okay, Sweet. Good. Excellent. So now we're just going to uh, put that same filter logic for the other two widgets on that screen there. And I'm going to go back in first and copy it. So I don't want to. So, you know, as, as we use App Builder ourselves, you know, we, we notice things too that we go, wow, it would be nice to do this or nice to be able to do this. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, we're not crazy right now that we have to go in and, and filter each one each time, you know. So, you know, ultimately, I'm sure we'll put something in where, you know, we could just say, look, filter all three of these and do the same thing. Right. I agree. It's having a bit redundant. And then for top active, is the data source the same? Well, be, it, oh, good. All right, let's just put it in and see if it works. <laughs> okay. Trying, I thought one of these was not the exact. Different, yeah. Yeah, user ID. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm gonna save this off and just see. Because I have a feeling I I thought one of those widgets might have been a different filter. Was a different data source, so that filter wouldn't. 
I think it still had the same fields, though. True. Yeah, so maybe it will work. All right. All right, perfect. Nice. So the other thing on that um, wireframe we had, we also had a reset button just to be able to reset all the fields. So maybe we put okay. that in the form as well. So we're just going to the form, we're adding another button and we're just calling it reset. It's not going to be a primary button. And reset, we're gonna use a utility. So based on the type of widget that we're using, there, there are different utilities available. In this case, we want to reset and primary. Basically, we wanna reset the, all the form fields to blank and mimic the click of the primary button. So what that'll do is it'll clear the, all the filters on the, on the, on the right-hand side widgets and put it back to its you know, beginning state. All right, so I'll just do QSEC again. Enter, and now reset. Okay. I already see that. I don't, I, I don't want search on the left. Right. So um, we should just be able to go in there and move, drag. Right? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. That's good. All right, so we still got about 15 minutes. Maybe we have time to create the, uh, the pivot grid because now we're getting into when we click one of, the, one of the grid rows or one of the chart elements, we want to swap to a different screen and show a, a, a pivot grid. Right. I don't know, or Johnny, or do you want to just, just swap to the section with nothing in it initially? Well, no, let's just, I don't know if that'll even work. <laughs> well, the pivot grid's in its own section though, right? That's what we'd want to do. Right. No, let's, let's see, because I already, I, 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 you got the I have statement. the, I have the SQL statement. I saved okay. it all. I like I, you know, we worked it earlier. So this one, it shouldn't be a, okay. Let me just grab that. Okay. Sweet. So this is giving us more detail for each usage. So we can use that. Uh, all right, so all right. pivot grid it is. Okay. So here, I think this, this one is easy. This is best just to show by example. Um, as, as, as we click the left access columns, it's, I always like to show what it is doing on the configure screen. So I think if we start with year, month name, app name, login ID and stamp really is what we want on the left. Month name, what else would we want? We want app name, right? Uh, yeah, so I'd say year, we want month name, we want app name, we want the VV login ID. Have that. Uh, F2 underscore VV login ID. Uh, okay, yeah, to VV login ID, perfect. Uh, what else, is that it for those two? Or four, those four, I would think? Yeah, and then uh, maybe we show what that does, and then we're gonna aggregate something. 
So that's taking all the data and summing it up. So now we want every, every pivot grid, we want an aggregate. Basically, we want, we want to count something up. And what we want to count is um, the number of times they've used it. So we could just use the timestamp field and aggregate that. Yep. And on the right hand side, the summary by default. We don't want total, right? We don't want to total it, but we want to count it. And then probably want to format that just as a number. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's just see where we're at. Okay. Okay. So it is breaking it out for us. Nice. Sweet. Okay. So let's see, what do we want to call some of these things? Year, month, usage, I guess, right? Yeah, usage, year. Year. User. Perfect, yeah. Is our order, are we good with the order? That we're doing year. So starting at year month yeah i think that's right yeah, that is right okay um maybe we change this view too um if we scroll down there there's another there's a summary view there's a yeah or outline, the outline. View. the outline view i at least i tend to think that looks a little nicer hmm. so now if you drop that down at least we get the full we could see the full text yeah. Yeah, I guess it's just all preference. All preference, yeah. Um, should we allow them to, the users to change this? I would think so. Yeah. So, user so allow confusing user configuration. So that'll allow the user to um, change the order of the summaries. You know, like let's say I wanted to start with month. I could just drag month above year. And it'll rebuild everything. Oh, wait, sorry. There we go. I mean, in this case, we wouldn't want to do that because it doesn't really make sense, but. Right. And then also we could, if we wanted to add other fields from our data source to be available. So then, yeah, they, maybe, you know, maybe I mean? add day name in there just to show. Yeah. So day name was not in there, but now it should be day name. And of course you could have then changed the column so it doesn't look the way it looks. Okay, yeah, it's good. Let's, let's see right. quickly incorporate it because it's already 1052. Yep. So I'm just gonna save this. So obviously the, you know, the next time we do this, we'll, we'll complete this, this application. Right. So we're definitely not going to have time. No. We get a good chunk of it though. So we're so. putting this pivot grid in an entirely new section. So we, we see a lot of, um, we'll see a lot of users, customers, I should say, not use this in that they'll, they'll add the widget into the main section and then programmatically through behaviors hide and show it, which this is definitely the best way to do it. You just create a new section, call it whatever you want. So now we have a blank slate here. Nothing exists in detail. Perfect. Okay. So we can switch between the two. It's much easier to see what is in each section. So let's just get. Maybe we'll just deal with the grid first. I think so. Or yeah, because it's not first, but today, and that's it. Right. Filter widget. Our pivot. And let's see. What do I want? How do I want to filter this thing? In this case, we don't need a custom filter. I think Machine we could just we could just use our our. Uh, our app variables, but I think we do want to incorporate a new app variable of, of app ID. 
when when the user clicks. Right, when they click that, we do. Yeah. Let me just do that now. So we're creating another app variable called app ID. And basically, when the user clicks the grid row, we're going to set that new uh, app ID app variable to the value from that record of app ID. Nice. So now we can filter that widget by that. all through app variables. So we're just going to have from date is. Uh, I only have user ID, filter widget fields. You know what? Maybe, maybe, need... maybe we stop it here. <laughs> yeah, because we're in a 55 set. So we're going to go back to that widget. I don't want to explain, yeah, what explain we're doing. Explain why we need to add those other ones because we don't have them just yet. So, all right, well, this is a good start, and we'll just kick it off uh, next, I think, what, just next Friday, same time. Um, like we said, we're going to, this is being recorded, so we will uh, post this on our, the CNX Corporation uh, YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for everybody for showing up, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you.